I just want to read something to you. At 42nd Street Mission, New York City, we had a powerful time. A young girl came under the power and her spirit was caught up to the throne. She sang a melody without words that was so heavenly that it seemed to come from, the, from behind the veil. It seemed to come from another world. I'd never heard the equal before or since. A.B. Simpson was there himself that night and was tremendously impressed by it, expeditionally impressed by it. <laughs> he had been much opposed to the Pentecostal work. Doubtless, God gave it as a witness for him. Several were slain under the power. Towards morning, this is a meeting that started mostly about six o'clock in the afternoon. Towards morning, how many people want revival? Towards morning, the presence of the Lord was simply wonderful. I went to leave the hall just before daybreak and shook hands with a sister, hungry, everybody say hungry, for the baptism. The Spirit came upon her. I could, could not turn her loose. I like that. I could not turn her loose until she fell at the altar and came through speaking in tongues. I shook hands with another hungry sister as I started to leave the hall again. The Spirit fell upon her also, and she received the baptism right there on her feet. Speaking in tongues before I could turn her loose. <laughs> that was a wonderful night. Father, I long. I long. I long to have an encounter with you where we'll stay all night and where in the break of day we'll say, wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that amazing? And Lord, I pray today that you would help us to have a fresh hunger and even a fresh revelation of the baptism in the Holy Spirit and what you've done for us and what you've empowered us with. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, I believe that Jesus deserves better. I believe he deserves a better church. Amen? I believe he deserves more commitment from us. I believe he deserves better. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he died, I can live. Because he rose again and he conquered hell and death. Because he sent the mighty Holy Spirit, I have power over the works of Satan. And I can live a victorious Christian life. Jesus paid an horrific price for our freedom. It will do us all good to meditate on what Jesus did and what he paid for my freedom. Just to meditate on it and allow the Spirit of God to wash over you so as that we can somehow or other allow our hearts, if I can say it like this, or the stony part of our lives to be broken so He can pour in His love and His grace and His mercy. Jesus paid an horrific price for our freedom. I have been purchased through His suffering and His obedience. I've been purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. Now I should live for Him not for self. Father, just give us the strength to become what you want us to become in Jesus' name. If there is a God, there has to be a devil. If there is a truth, there has to be a lie. We could go on and on and on in those sort of phrases. But God showed his hand and it was a hand of blessing and a hand of love. He made sure 
that when He prepared a place for Adam and Eve, it was good. It had everything that, it, that He needed, that they needed. It was a beautiful place. Satan showed his hand, and his hand was a hand of separation, pain, and suffering. In Genesis chapter 3, we read this story, how the enemy came in to deceive, how he came in to spread a lie, how he came in to steal the truth. And even though the love of God, which would have manifested itself in that garden, as God came down in the cool of the evening and fellowship with his family, how he would have spoken to them and just as they looked at the beautiful, beautiful environment that they were living in, the unadulterated presence of God. Friend, we had perhaps today, if I can use this word, a smidgen, such a small, small particle of something that is so dynamic and so powerful that our natural mind will never ever be able to comprehend the love of God. That God so loved the world, you and me, that He sent His Son that we would die, that He would die rather on a cross to save me, to set me free. What an amazing environment. But the enemy comes in and sows a seed, a lie that separated man from his God, that caused a great rift and a great trouble. Today, we still struggle with what God really says. Friend, if ever there is a time in the history of humanity, and I believe what Harry was saying, that the enemy... Time is short, and he knows it. And he will pour out his fury and his wrath. But if ever there is a time when we, the church, need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God says is today. Because there are many, many voices, many, many things that are being said. Down through the ages, this constant battle rages. We need to hear and we need to somehow or other get this word into us and understand what the word is saying. God is love. Amen. And I believe that God is seeking a people. I believe today that God's eyes are going to and fro over the world. He is seeking a people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's not looking for a people that perhaps will just go in and, and do their thing, but he's looking for substance. He's looking for hearts that are preparing themselves, for people that are, uh, there's a passion on the inside. Friend, I believe that everything starts with a passion. When I first met Nancy, she was... 14, I was 15. But God, when I saw her, something happened on the inside that stirred me. Amen. That caused me to go after, if I can talk like this, to go after Nancy. It wasn't just something that I said, oh, she looks okay, and just walked away. No, there was something on the inside that caused me to go after her. Amen. And I believe that there's got to come something again that's in the inside of us that will cause us to go after God. Does that make sense? To go after God. I thank God that I went after her and caught her, only to find out that she was... No, I won't say that. No. But as we go through the ages, there's this constant battle. It rages. I believe today that the marriage equality bill is stirring up tension that could divide a nation. Already the hatred and clashes are heating up, totally ignoring what God says. The Word of God must be 
must be our guide. Amen? It doesn't matter what popular opinion says. It's another trick of the enemy. Amen? Another trick. Let's look at history a bit. All throughout history, we see the battle played out. From Adam and Eve, Cain killing Abel, till God had to cause a flood to come upon the planet. What a horrible thing. But God has always had His voice. He's always had His people right from the days of Noah, right from that time. And I believe today He's still got His voice. Amen? He's got His David, who in the midst of a heated battle, a young boy, untrained most probably in the natural, but trained in the realm of the Spirit. There's got to come a time when we desire to be trained in that realm of the realm of the Spirit. And he said just a few words, but I believe that it, it broke through and it smashed something in the realm of the Spirit that caused the atmosphere of that battle to change. Just like we were singing that song, the atmosphere is changing. I want to tell you, friends, today that if we, the people of God, if we can somehow or other worship Him, and allow the freedom and the liberty to, to just explode out of our lives, the atmosphere over the Sunshine Coast will change. And men and women will get born again. And the church of the living God will rise. Is there not a cause, he said. Is there not a cause? Friend, is there not a cause today for you and I to really open our hearts and allow the King of glory to come in. Right down to the New Testament church, God has always had a voice. John the Baptist cried out, Repent and prepare the way of the Lord. A lot of things that were said in the songs, a lot of things that, that as Harry was sharing communion, is lining up with exactly what I, what I want to share today, that, friend, there has got to come a preparation in our hearts. The world system would take us one way, would try to drive us in a, in a particular way, looking for perhaps fame or fortune or finances or, or this or that. And a lot of people are preparing for, for the future that we might never ever see. But I believe it's a time to prepare the way of the Lord. It's a time really that we should prepare our hearts and allow our hearts to be changed. Prepare the way of the Lord. The strength of the early church that we read so much about was unity, the power of the Holy Spirit, and persecution. We've often heard people as we've prayed, and we're praying for unity, and I, and I often said to people, do you know what you're asking God to do? Bring persecution so that it will bring unity. But friend, I want to say this. I believe that there will be a bunch of people that somehow are out, out of their heart after they're seeking God, after just desiring and wanting God more than anything else, that passion would burn within us, that as we sing the songs of praise, it just wouldn't be another song, but it would be something that would be birthed on the inside of us, that out of our innermost being there would be something going out to God, that God would connect with man, and man and, and God and humanity would rise, and there would be a bunch of people that would cause a great avalanche of the power of God to hit a nation. I honestly believe that. And I know that God is working on many, many people. The story that we spoke about as this man, as he said, that as he shook hands with people and the power of God flowed out of him. Friend, I believe that we are anointed vessels, that God wants to anoint our lives so much that we would carry the mantle and the power and the victory of Christ, that we will go into shopping centers even and shake somebody's hand and the power of God will hit them. Amen. People will be healed and delivered and set free because I believe in that. And I was just excited at that story 
as I as I pictured it in my mind, as he as he as he took that woman by the hand who was hungry for something from God. And the power of God flowed into that woman and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. And another and another. Many years ago we were in the children's camp. And I was there with, with a group of people and, and we were going to uh, speak about the Holy Spirit so that we could then uh, pray for the kids after a few weeks and they would get filled with the Holy Ghost. I can remember this night like as if it was yesterday. It was one of the first nights of the camp. And we were just there and beginning to praise and to begin to worship, but the presence of God came into Tachikoi. I don't know why, but every time we had a meeting at that place, the presence of God would come in in an amazing way. I believe it's God's wanting to meet with His people. And as we were there just singing and worshipping and, and just preparing our hearts, there was another gentleman who was going to preach that night. He was going to speak about the baptism and the Holy Spirit. When I looked over and I saw this little boy with his hands raised, tears coming down his cheeks, babbling away in tongues. And I looked at him and I thought, my God, this little fellow just got filled with the Holy Spirit. And I remember as I, I wanted to walk over towards him just to find out what was going on. But there was all these children, I think there's about three or four hundred children at this camp. And they were all just standing there with their hands raised, eyes shut, praising God. And as I walked through, I put my hand on a boy's head to get through. And as I did, he got slain in the Spirit and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Every person that I touched getting to that boy got slain in the Spirit. Friend, I'm nobody. I'm just a person. Just like you. But I want to tell you, when the unction, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are a different person. Amen. You are anointed. And friend, I want to tell you, that there's something that I believe that God is drawing us to. I believe that we're starting to experience it. I've heard about what was just the last few weeks at church as the presence of God comes into this place. Friend, I want to tell you, don't just let it be just something that happens on a, a, for a, a few minutes on Sunday morning, but let it get on the inside of you and let it break up something on the inside of you that causes a stirring and, and something there that will rise up that will cause you to go after God like a bulldog would go after a rat. Shouldn't have said it like that, sorry. It's not good, <laughs> whatever it is. But you catch my drift. Amen? I'll get off that subject again. <laughs> what, an, what an amazing thing that, that happened there. What, what an amazing thing that God can do. John the Baptist, repentance. The, there was great persecution. The Jews plotted to destroy Jesus and the church in John 11.47. And I ask you would, you, would you read this yourself? I, for time's sake, I, I just ask you to read it at some time. John eleven forty seven. They just they just uh, uh, he just raised Lazarus from the dead, and the Jews were plotting and they're saying, "Man, we can't let this guy go. We can't let him continue. If he does, everybody will come to him. He he will destroy it, and then then the Romans will come in and they'll mess up our our little thing that we've got going here." They didn't want God. They didn't want the miracles. They didn't want the presence of God. They just wanted their lifestyle. They just wanted their, their thing, that they were in control, that they were, that they were there, that doing their own thing. They didn't want God. And then in John 12, verse 9, it says there that many were coming to, to, to see the man that had been raised from the dead. But these people, these Jewish people there that were so uh, full of their enemy, the enemy's intent in their heart. Many Jews were coming to Christ. Many Jews were, were, were surrendering, but there was a bunch of people that were in leadership there that were going against what God was doing. And they wanted to, to not only kill Jesus, but they wanted to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill the miracles. Friend, I want to tell you there's one thing the enemy wants to do. He wants to stop the miracle power of God in our church. He wants to stop the power of God from going out and touching people, healing people, delivering people, setting people free. But I want to tell you there's going to come a surge. There's going to come a surge of God's power that's going to touch people. I believe that people are going to be healed. People are going to jump out of wheelchairs. Why? Because God did it. He's Whatever He said, He can do in Jesus' name. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, 
something fresh fell on the early church. The Pentecostal movement began. Isaiah 43, 18 to 20. I'll get you to read that again too. It says there, it says that, Behold, I want to do a new thing. Will you be able to receive it? Will you be able to hear it? Friend, when God wants to do a new thing, will we be people there that will be able to take it on? Will we be able to, will we be a people there that will be able to receive the new thing that God wants to do? Because I believe that God wants to do a new thing in our midst. Do you believe that? God wants to do a new thing in our midst. I could prophesy it right now. I believe that God wants to do a new thing in our midst. And I believe that new thing that He wants to do is He wants to pour out His Spirit in a new way. He wants to somehow or other impregnate us, marinate us, put a hunger on the inside of us, a thirsting on the inside of us, a desire on the inside of us, a longing on the inside of us. Oh, Rashakabundi, that will go after God. Amen. Christianity is not a one or two hour thing on a Sunday morning. It's either everything or it's nothing. And if we fall into the trap of going after everything else and putting God somewhere in the back burner, friend, we're doomed for death. Don't remember the old life or bondage. I'm going to do a new thing. As I was prophesying of something new that was going to happen, the early church experienced this new thing in full. Though they were being persecuted, they had joy, power, and victory. Persecution may come. I don't know what's going to happen out of this marriage equality thing. All I know is bring it on. It's God is in control. God is in control. This may be God. The early church walked in the light of revelation. That's why Paul, when he prayed for us, he said, Lord, open the eyes of their understanding that they might be able to see and acknowledge that they might have revelation and wisdom. But that something fresh might come upon us. The church thrived in persecution. Satan could see that his plan of persecution didn't stop the church. Instead, it grew rapidly. So he changed tack. Constantine became the Roman emperor. Somehow he embraced Christianity. Whether he was saved or not is still unknown. But he was supposedly converted. He made Christianity Christianity the religion of the Roman Empire. Constantine removed the spiritual leaders of the church and put in his own offices. You've got to remember that Rome served pagan gods. So these new leaders, supposedly to lead the church, had this mixture. And so mixture spread into the church. And they brought in the pagan teachings as well. The persecution stopped. And so did the move of God. Satan had his way and the world system started to seep into the church. I was reading a book and it said this in the book. It said, when the ship is in the ocean, it is okay. But when the ocean gets into the ship, it will sink. We are of this world. We can sail through this world, but when the world gets into the ship, into the church, we're finished. 
And that's been Satan's plan for so many decades now, is to bring the world system into the church. So, 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 so cold. And so many people today that they come to church and they wonder what's going on. Friend, let me say it again. What we are experiencing today is but a smidgen of what God really has for us. Are you ready for it? Are you wanting it? Are you longing for it? Is there something there that will take us out of something and bring us into something? Satan had his way. But the Lord has always had his voice. The Lord has always had his voice. Martin Luther, John uh, Wycliffe, John Wesley, George uh, Whitfield, William Booth and others all carried the anointing. The new thing God said he would do is still happening today. It's still happening today. But I've got a question for us. How much of the world is in the church today? How much of the world really is in the church today? How much are we living for God and His purpose, or are we living for self? These are, you might say, but Neil, that's super spiritual. No, I believe that this is normal Christian living. Dare to ask God to reveal if you live for the world or for Him. I, as I read stories, as I read testimonies of people, many, many, many of those people were in a state where they started to cry out to God. A young man over there, I believe, was crying out to God. And that's what gets God's attention. And I read stories of so many people that have been in a predicament and even like where they felt God has left them, where nothing's really going on. But they've cried out to God and they've, they've said, God, even if you're really there, if, if, if you're really, really there, touch my life. And somehow or other, God hears that. God, if, if I'm on the wrong track, if I'm, if I'm going the wrong way, if, if something's got into my life and in my thinking that's taking me away from the purpose and the plan of God. When, when I got saved, I, I had plans. I, I had great plans. But even this morning, as, 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 as we think of things and, and where you might have gone into business or got something there and somehow or other you got ripped off. Anybody here ever been ripped off? Would you ever think that it might have been God? <laughs> because you're going in the wrong direction? Oh, God wouldn't do that? No, would you talk to Noah and his mob? <laughs> You talk to the children of Israel that were handed over to the Midianites before all that time. You, you talk, you, you find out, friend, I don't know where I would be today if I would have had my way. <laughs> but somewhere, somehow, when you say to God, have your way in me, then things start to change around your life. And sometimes we think it's a devil and we curse the devil, but friend, it may be God. Because I don't think I would be here today if I would have had my way. But I am so glad today that I am here right now in Kiwana waters with a bunch of people worshipping God because I sense the presence of God and I sense that God is not passing us by and I sense that God is going to use us in a mighty way. Do not look at yourself and think you're over. My friend, I want to tell you, God is about to do great things in your life. 
I am so grateful to be here. I am so thankful to God that I am here. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad that I can talk in tongues. I heard a man that went to a Pentecostal church and he lifted up his hands and somebody tapped him on the shoulder and said, excuse me, sir, we don't do that here. You might offend somebody. Well, I reckon when I stick my hands up in the air, I stick my finger right up the devil's nose. Shakabundi. <laughs> What's important to me? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's not just a matter of sitting around. No, you've got to go after something. I went after this girl, hallelujah, and I got her. There's others going after her, but I got her, hallelujah. <laughs> you've got to go after God, amen. You've got to go after God. He's already done everything that he can. There's a lot of people that have made Jesus Savior of their life, but I want to tell you, friends, it's time that we made him Lord of our lives, Hallelujah. Go after God. Go after God. Go after God. Hallelujah. Oh, Rosh Monday. Get something on the inside of you that'll stir. What's important to me? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know us not. If you're not calling out God, most surely won't talk. Or when he does talk, it'll go over our heads. And God says, I want to use you in a mighty way. And God says, I want to pour out my spirit upon this place. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Man, get excited about it. Grab hold of it. Don't just say, oh, wow, that was something. That bloke must have been on Happy Backy or something. No. <clears throat> I'm being very, very careful here today. Is there a surging inside you for more? Do you want to see the lost saved, the blind healed, the crippled walk? We serve the same God. God hasn't changed. Maybe the church has. Let's get back what God wants for the church. Things I need to do that will cause a change in my life. Amazing that the musicians were singing, the atmosphere is changing. Amazing that we, that, that, because friend, this is where it's at. There's got to come a change in me. How many people want to change? Come on, how many people want to change in your life? Come on, how many people want to get stirred up? Hallelujah. Let the fire burn inside you. I, things that I've got to do I need, that'll cause a change in me. Get a deeper realization and a deeper need for God in my life. Get a surging for revival in the depths of my soul. Get a burden and a cry in my heart for a mighty revival. Totally commit myself afresh to the Lord and His service. These are all different things that we need to do. Totally commit myself afresh. Friend, I want to commit myself afresh to the revival fire that's going to burn on the Sunshine Coast. I want to totally commit myself afresh to this church, hallelujah. I want to totally commit myself afresh to each and every one of you. I want to totally commit myself afresh to the things of God, amen. I want to totally commit myself afresh to what God has for my life. And there's an expectancy. And I pray that I am contagious. That I might be wholly His. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. The Lord will visit those willing to yield to him. The devil doesn't like me saying this. Totally Commit yourself afresh to the Lord and His service. 
totally commit yourself. I'm committing myself afresh to the Lord and His servants. How many people here want to totally commit yourself afresh to the Lord and His servants? I'm going to ask today, as the musicians come, I don't think I've ever said that before in this church. The musicians come. If you are serious today, when I ask you, do you totally want to commit yourself afresh to his service, to the things of God? It may mean a change of direction for you. It may even mean a little bit of discomfort. But I promise you this, you'll have joy you'll have victory, and you'll have power. You'll have joy and victory and power. I'm just going to, as we all stand to our feet, I'm just going to ask you, if you are serious, and you would love to just come and stand as you make that commitment. If you're making it, come, just come and stand and make that commitment. I'm standing here, Nancy, with me. We're making this commitment to you, to this church, to this people, to the things of God. Come on, folks. There's nothing wrong with making a commitment to Jesus. Saying we just want to be totally committed to you, Jesus. Whatever you say, speak to my heart. Speak to my life. Father, just talk to God yourself. Stand before you today. This is something you're not doing for Neil. You're doing it, you're speaking to God. Talking to Him. It's what I want to do, Lord. You're not committing yourself to this church. I would love not to even have a name. I was driving in this morning and you can't see the, the world map. All I could see was church. Ten o'clock. Church. Ten o'clock. That's it. That'll do me. Church. Ten o'clock. With the arrow that way. <laughs> Lord, I just commit myself. Speak to me. Have your way in my life. I yield to you, Lord. I yield to you.